Hi, this is Charlie Hesse from Tropical Birding and welcome to this virtual bird tour of Taiwan. I went to Taiwan for the first time about 20 years ago and I've guided there many, many times since. Um, it's a place I love going back to. Um, I love the food and the scenery and the people, and the language. I've been studying Chinese for the past 10 years. But yeah, most of all, I love the wildlife. Um, it's got amazing birding. It's got almost 30 endemics, including this beautiful swimhose pheasant. It's got some amazing shore birding. It's got beautiful breeding pitta that we're going to go and look for. Um, and recently we added a migration extension to this tour. Um, it's got some pretty exciting birding um, on some small islands just off the uh, Asian mainland. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy it. Let's start with a map of the region. Uh, you can see um, Taiwan is a very large island uh, located off the Chinese mainland. Um, it's about uh, 245 miles long uh, by 90 miles wide at the widest point. It's got a long and complex history. Um, the first immigrants were about 6,000 years ago from Polynesia. Um, and more recently, in about the 17th century, there was a large migration of Han Chinese. In uh, 1895, uh, it became a colony of Japan for 50 years until the end of the Second World War, when it was handed to the Chinese nationalists. Um, and in 1949, when uh, the Nationalist Army uh, lost the Chinese Civil War against the Communist Army, uh, they fled to Taiwan. And Taiwan's uh, official name is still the Republic of China, compared to uh, mainland China, which is the People's Republic of China. It's quite a complicated situation politically. Let's have a closer look at Taiwan. Um, you can see it's oriented north to south here. Um, there's a central mountain chain that goes all the way down. Um, about uh, two-thirds of um, Taiwan is mountains and forest. There's a population of about 24 million people, most of who are um, in cities on, uh, in the flat areas. You can see there's a very broad coastal plain on the western side and a very narrow plain on the eastern side. Okay, we're going to start the tour at the Taoyuan International Airport. Um, it's not actually Taipei, um, the capital, but a, a city nearby. Some people may choose to come early, and this is one of the things you can see, the National Palace Museum, very famous museum. It's got a lot of uh, ancient Chinese artifacts and, um, and treasures. And um, it's also lots of interesting uh, temples around Taipei that are um, great places to visit. Um, markets as well are very uh, vibrant and um, fascinating places. The food in Taipei is absolutely outstanding. Um, there's all sorts, there's all these little kind of steamed buns and different types of meats and vegetables. This is um, pretty much how we're going to be eating on the tour, uh, family style. We order several different dishes, we take requests and then we get them lots of rice and then we just all uh, share the food. I'm a vegetarian and Taiwanese vegetarian food is absolutely outstanding. It's one of the best places in the world to visit as a vegetarian. They take uh, like fake meat and fish to, to a different level. We're going to start the migration extension at the Keelung Ferry Terminal, uh, where we're going to get on an overnight ferry to the island of Dong Yin. This is part of the Matsu Islands, which are just off the coast of mainland China. Birds migrating along the coast um, northwards in spring and they tend to fly over the sea rather than over the land and if there's any inclement weather, a headwind or any, um, any rain then they'll come down, they'll drop down onto these um, small islands. So we're going to be visiting two of these islands, Dongyin and Nanggang. There's really nothing special about the habitats here, we just drive around different places, um, grassy areas, little patches of forest and orchards and things like that. I'm looking for what birds we can find. Let's zoom in on Dong Ying. One of the f uh, first places we visit is the uh, the running track, which has nice short grass. Um, sometimes here we can see things like little curlew, grey-headed lapwing. Um, it's also good for things like pipits and wagtails. Uh, this is a um, red-throated pipit in breeding plumage. Several different wagtails. Uh, this is white wagtail. Uh, sometimes you get several different subspecies of white wagtail. More inside the forest now. You can get things like this forest wagtail. Uh, when we were there, there were some um, Taiwanese bird photographers 
and they'd set up a little feeding station. So they got a little log and they put some mealworms on it and there was all sorts of different birds coming in to feed on them, including this um, forest whitetail. There's a lot of different buntings in mean, breeding plumage, uh, like this chestnut eared bunting, uh, Tristram's bunting, little bunting, the rare Japanese yellow bunting. This is a globally threatened species and it's quite hard to find in many places. It's probably the best place to see it is on migration. This is a critically endangered species called the yellow-breasted bunting. It winters down in Thailand and Cambodia, um, but it's not particularly easy to see there. Um, it just hunkers down in the long grass. On migration, uh, it just sits out in the open. So uh, much easier to see, and of course it's in uh, breeding plumage too. I have some beautiful flycatchers, like this blue and white flycatcher. The Narcissus flycatcher, which looks kind of like a Blackburnian warbler with this beautiful orange color. You'll notice this, this has got an orange brow and there's a similar species called the yellow rumped flycatcher, which has a white brow. When we were on these islands, we created a bit of a stir. A journalist from the local newspaper came to interview us, brought his camera and his, his notebook and came to find out what we were up to. Um, and then we made the uh, the front page of the local paper, Waigoren, Shang Niao Tuan, and the foreigners uh, birding group. Yeah, so that that was uh, 15 minutes of fame. From Dongying, we're gonna uh, take a ferry across to Nangang, um, a larger island. Yeah, with many of the same species. And from there, we will fly back to Taipei. Uh, this time, we'll be landing um, in Taipei City at the smaller Songshan Airport for domestic flights. Continuing on the uh, migration tour, we're going to head to the town of Jinshan. There's also some migration hotspots here, and we're going to use that as a base to visit this little peninsula here. It's called the uh, Yeliao Geo Park. Um, it's a little uh, spit of land that sticks out into the sea, which sometimes catches a few migrants. This is what it looks like on the ground. There's lots of interesting geological features here, uh, which are quite a, a popular tourist place. Uh, looking back at the map, uh, most people just go to this first section, but we're going to continue on to this uh, little forested place here, which is much, uh, much quieter. And yeah, we may find some of the interesting migrants there as well. There's a few rare vagrants that have occasionally shown up in Taiwan, like this Siberian crane that we saw a few years ago. Um, and just recently there was a, a very rare buyer's pochard showed up as well. So if a rarity shows up during this tour, then we'll make sure we go and uh, twitch it. Um, from um, Ye Liu, we're going to finish the extension and head back to Taoyuan Airport, where we'll meet up with clients that didn't join the extension. And then on the main tour, we're going to start um, at the Sherman Dam. It's just a little area of uh, lowland forest by a big reservoir, but uh, should get us our first endemics of the tour. The hotels in Taiwan in general don't do very early breakfast. So what we normally have to do is get the uh, picnic tables and chairs and then buy lots of food, cereal and yogurt and bread and peanut butter and teas and coffees and things. Um, and then we have a lot of field breakfast. It's actually a very nice part of the tour because uh, it means we're having a lot of um, birding breakfasts. This is the Taiwan Blue Magpie, our main target here. It was actually voted the national bird of Taiwan. Um, stunningly beautiful bird. And yeah, we quite often see it here. Um, we should see another bird, the Taiwan barbet. It's fairly common. In Chinese, this is called a wusen yao, which means a five colored bird. Um, green, blue, yellow, red, um, and black. Um, another endemic we might see is the Taiwan whistling thrush. We might see some more skulking uh, babbler type birds like this uh, Taiwan similar babbler. And this is one of the more recently uh, split birds. This is now called the Taiwan bamboo partridge. It's one of the tougher endemics, but we often uh, hear it here. It's got a very loud call. Some of the birds we might see uh, include the uh, crested goshawk, an endemic subspecies of uh, gray capped woodpecker, endemic subspecies of gray tree pie. We've got a bit of a drive now, uh, about three hours down to the southwestern side um, of Taiwan and a place called Augu. It's a uh, wetland bird reserve um, full of shorebirds. 
you can see here's the sign for Augu, beautiful accident. I think that was maybe uh, lost in translation. This is one of the most famous residents, the uh, black-faced spoonbill. Black-faced spoonbills are an endangered species, um, but they've really um, increased in recent years, and now there's uh, over 4,000 of them, about 50% of which uh, winter in Taiwan. But hopefully, there'll still be a few um, hanging around. Many of them have started to move north to their breeding grounds. Augu is a wonderful place for, um, for shorebirds. Uh, many of them are in breeding plumage, like this lesser sand plover, gorgeous sort of rusty red color and these beautiful black and white uh, facial markings. Lots of sandpiper family, uh, like these ruddy turnstones, uh, which should be a common sight for people in Europe and North America as well. This is one of the commoner shorebirds, the uh, marsh sandpiper. It's got a very uh, long, thin, straight bill. Uh, normally in winter, they've got very whitish plumage, but um, their breeding plumage is this beautiful sort of uh, speckled pattern on the chest. Another one of the common birds is a redneck stint, very small bird. You can see its beautiful sort of uh, orangey color on the throat. Another one of the small uh, shorebirds is the long-toed stint. You can see as it uh, picks its feet up out of the mud, those very long toes, got a very warm brown um, back. You can see it, um, it's a nice comparison here next to the redneck stints. One of the specialty Asian shorebirds is the broad-billed sandpiper. See, it's got these very uh, distinctive crown stripes and this quite long curved bill that uh, dips down towards the tip. This is another one, the sharp-tailed sandpiper. Um, very distinctive feeding behavior there. This is one of my favorite shorebirds, the uh, curlew sandpiper. Um, in breeding plumage, they have this rusty red um, color. Really, uh, really beautiful. These are very interesting birds. This is the red-necked phalarope. Um, you can see there's some uh, um, dull-colored ones there in the front and a, a, ni a nice um, reddish necked one at the back there. Um, the, the duller ones are actually the males and the colorful ones are the females. Um, males um, incubate the eggs and look after the chicks and the female will go around mating with several males. Uh, very unusual in the animal world. Uh, this is known as um, polyandry. Near Tainan, we may also go and visit a place for this beautiful bird, the pheasant-tailed jacana that breeds near here in a small reserve. Um, from Augu, we're going to head uh, a little bit further south uh, to Tainan City and then uh, another place nearby called Chigu. This area has got lots of little creeks and ponds uh, where we may see common kingfisher. Um, it's also got some farmland where we might see the um, endemic subspecies of ringneck pheasant, a really beautiful bird. There's a lot of other um, grassland birds like this um, golden-headed cystickler here in uh, breeding plumage. Um, near Tainan, there is a bat museum. It's called the Formosan Golden Bats Home, um, and it's absolutely fascinating. There's a bat called the, the Formosan Golden Bat, uh, and some local bat enthusiasts got together um, and they set up a small uh, bat museum. Chinese often give themselves an English name. This lady, because she loves bats so much, called herself Echo, after Echo location. So this is Echo telling us all about the local bats. Um, and then we're taken out to find these uh, beautiful little things. These are the Formosan golden bats. Okay, from Tainan, we're now going to move up towards the mountains to a place called Alishan. Alishan is a very famous tea growing area. It has world famous tea. Um, we stay in a nice lodge there and the owner gives us a little tea ceremony where we can try out some local Taiwanese teas. He's a very uh, interesting chap. Um, he's also involved in um, conservation. And once he was on TV in Taiwan um, and he recorded a show and anyone that goes there now has to sit through his, uh, his little TV show which he puts on a big screen. He's an interesting guy. He uh, set up a um, feeding blind for this um, endemic, the Taiwan partridge. Uh, very, very difficult bird to see um, if you're just going to go and look for it in the forest. But when you go to his blind, um, it's obviously um, very easy. Uh, it's a little bit dark in there, but um, yeah, you get very good views um, of these birds. We may also see this beautiful bird, uh, the swin hose pheasant. Um, it just looks like it's been made out of sapphires and rubies. It's just 
an absolutely gobsmacking bird. Um, it's really one of my favorite birds. Yeah, and we should get good views of it. Um, here's one uh, feeding on the, the grain. Some other birds often come in as well to a little bird bath there. This is another endemic species called the Steers leocicla. And another bird we might see is the uh, endemic subspecies of white-tailed robin. And this is a very good area to go out at night. You can see several owl species, including the uh, mountain scops owl, which is normally a very difficult bird to find. We may also see the giant flying squirrel, which is also fairly common in the area. From Ali Shan, we're going to head up into the mountains, into the Yushan National Park. I'm just going to show you a little bit of topography here. Um, you can see Ali Shan is down in the lower mountains, and as you go up, these mountains sort of get bigger um, and bigger until we get up to the Yushan National Park. Um, Yushan is actually the highest mountain um, in Taiwan. Yu means jade, so it's Jade Mountain. Um, and they've got some very nice uh, high elevation species there. It's beautiful mountain scenery. Yeah, a very special place to visit. On the way up, we should get some mid-elevation birds like this endemic Taiwan Yuhina. The grey chin minivet. And uh, the endemic subspecies of vivid Niltava. So Taiwan's at the moment got 29 um, endemic species. It seems to increase every year. And this is probably a banker. Uh, it's a very distinctive subspecies and will probably be split at some point as the Taiwan Niltava. Uh, another bird we can see up there is the um, very cute um, black-throated tit. Formosan rock macaques, an endemic mammal, are also pretty common up there. And they've become quite used to people and often hang around by the side of the road. A little bit higher up, we'll start to get some higher elevation species, like this yellowish-bellied bush warbler, which has a very distinctive call. And other birds we may come across include the Eurasian jay, another distinctive subspecies. And one bird that we may only see here on the trip is the grey-headed bullfinch, another endemic subspecies, and another uh, contender to be split in the future um, as Ostern's bullfinch. Some of the birds we might see include Taiwan Fulveda and a bird that it often associates with, the Golden Parrotbill, which is another banker, probably going to be split in the future. From Yushan, we're going to head to our next site, which is Qingjing. Um, on the way, we're going to stop um, at a place called Puli, where there's a little park where we're going to look for this beautiful bird, the Maroon Oriole. It's not maroon, you're going to tell me. Uh, that's because it's another distinctive endemic subspecies. Um, could be split as the red oriole. Another bird we can find here is the Taiwan Huamei. This is very similar to the Chinese Huamei. It's a different species now. Chinese Huameis are commonly kept as cage birds um, by Taiwanese people. And uh, escapees are now... Um, hybridizing with the native Huameis and you get these hybrids. I think this Huamei here has got a little bit of Chinese in it. Okay, so we're gonna head to Qingjing. Um, Qingjing is a very uh, interesting place. It's a sort of uh, like a hill resort um, and they've got a whole bunch of different hotels there. There's a Camelot Hotel and an old English hotel and all sorts of different ones so it's a place where the Taiwanese can sort of take a little um, interesting trip and um, it's also got some very nice um, hill forests nearby which is what we're going to be looking for this is a view from our hotel and um, a place we've been staying in the last couple of years and um, has a wonderful restaurant it's a hot pot restaurant Huo Guo, and they give you a big uh, pot of broth and um, you can choose which one you want a spicy one or a non-spicy one or a vegetarian one and they give you a whole bunch of other stuff to put inside meat or tofu or vegetables um, and then you cook your own little hot pot at the table which is a lot of fun this is a previous tour and um, that we uh, were enjoying hot pots and some taiwan beer some of the birds we're going to be looking for um, up there are uh, taiwan bowing a sort of babbler type bird um, another one, one of the um, 
endemic laughing thrush. It's called the rusty laughing thrush. Uh, quite hard to see, but uh, very vocal. This is another bird we're going to be looking for, the Taiwan shortwing. Um, it was recently split from the white brow shortwing, um, which uh, the male has uh, dark gray plumage. And this male has brown plumage, so it's quite a different looking bird, but was uh, recently split. Bit of a skulker. Another skulker is the Taiwan cupwing. Um, the cupwings are in their own family. They're like a little black ping pong ball, a tiny little round bird um, with hardly with any tail at all. Um, and they've got this loud um, high pitched call, but a real uh, tricky bird to find, but we normally do find it. Um, some of the birds we might find include the Taiwan yellow tit, and the white eared sibia. Sometimes if we um, play the collared owlet call, you get a lot of these birds coming in to mop the owl away. Um, and sometimes we do get an owl coming in as well. We may also see the white-backed woodpecker, another distinctive um, race. Just going to show you a little bit of the topography of the area. This is sort of like on a, uh, a ridge um, in the mountains. Um, with very nice forest on one side. And we're going to follow this road up higher and higher and higher um, up to the oh, where are we? up to the Wooling Pass up here. Um, this is the uh, the highest road in East Asia. Um, it's 3,275 meters, which is uh, well over 10,000 feet. It uh, can be pretty cold up there. We're going to be looking for, there's a parking lot up there, the viewpoint, um, and we're going to be looking for some special birds up there. Spectacular mountain scenery up there. You'll see here the tree line um, with uh, lots of pine trees and above that is uh, grassland. So on the way up, we're going to be checking some of these pine forests for birds like uh, spotted nutcracker, flame crest, uh, another endemic bird, which is in the same family as the North American kinglets. It's called a flame crest because sometimes it um, puts its beautiful crest up, but you don't always see that. Uh, another high elevation bird we might see is the collared bush robin, another endemic species. As we go up into the grassland, we might come across the Taiwan bush warbler. Um, not much to look at, but um, it's got a very fascinating call. It sounds almost like Morse code. Up at the top, it can be pretty cold. Um, it can even snow. This is my boss's wife uh, enjoying a little bit of snow, uh, very unusual in Taiwan. There's not many places where that happens, so they're quite excited. Up here, some of the birds we might see are uh, the Taiwan rose finch, uh, another recent split. It used to be called the Venaceous rose finch, and it's got this beautiful kind of red wine colored plumage. Um, yeah, really beautiful bird. Um, another bird we might see is the white whiskered laughing thrush. Um, you notice up here, birds can be extremely confiding. You can, some of these birds are almost hopping around your feet. This is a big target up here, probably the only place on the tour that we'll see it, the Alpine Accenter. Not an endemic, but uh, very, another very distinctive uh, subspecies. From the Wuling Pass, we're going to go down to the small town of Tian Shang. Once we get over the pass and start going down, we get back into this very lush montane forest. Uh, we arrive at the town of Tian Shang. Our target here is the Taiwan Bulbul, or Stian's Bulbul, another endemic species. Um, this is mainly found on the east coast of Taiwan, but uh, it comes up as high as this, so it's our only chance to see it. Below this is the beautiful Taroko Gorge, it's really one of the most spectacular mountain roads in Asia. This road was dug by hand, chiseled out by uh, indentured workers, um, and many people died during the making of the road, but it's a really um, stunning road to visit. Around here in the rivers, we may come across a brown dipper, um, or Plumbius water red start, or the endemic subspecies of little forktail. From Tian Shang, we're going to cross back over to Qingjing, um, and our next site will be Hui Sun. Um, not far as the crow flies, but um, because of the mountain, we've got to sort of go all the way around. Uh, Hui Sun's um, a more lowland area with some interesting birds. One of our targets is the Taiwan Blue Magpie. We may have seen this already, but here they they tend to be very uh, common and confiding, so it's a good place to get photos. 
Um, this is another endemic called the chestnut bellied tit. Um, it's another recent split from very tit, and it's probably going to be the only place we find it on the tour. These Malayan night herons are also quite common on the lawns there. This is the adult, and here is the juvenile, a very different looking, very distinctive uh, barring on the neck. Um, some other common birds we might come across include the uh, black bulbul, another endemic subspecies. Uh, we might be tired after all this birding, um, and we can take a little rest in some hammocks um, between the trees. From Hui Sun, we're going to go up to another mountain site called Da Shui Shan. Da Shui Shan means big snowy mountain. Um, it's really one of the most spectacular sites of the tour. Uh, we're going to stay up on the mountain in a place called the National Forest Recreation Center. Uh, here you can see some of the spectacular mountain scenery of Da Shui Shan. Da Shui Shan is a very special place. Um, it's the best place to find the Mikado pheasant, um, one of the spectacular endemic pheasants. It used to be the national bird um, and it was um, voted out by the Taiwan blue magpie, but um, it's really still one of my favorite Taiwan birds. Uh, the female's a lot more drab. You can see her there on the left. This is a video I just took with my, um, with my cell phone. Um, not great quality, but you get a good idea of what the bird looks like. It's got some really beautiful kind of velvety texture on the on the feathers. Uh, really stunning bird, absolutely gorgeous. You can see it. It has got some little fern, fresh fern leaves. Uh, some of these can be quite confiding, and it was almost walking right up to us. At the feed sites, we see some other little uh, small mammals like this maritime striped squirrel and the pony's long nose squirrel. It can be quite rainy on the mountains sometimes, but there's a, a visitor centre here um, where you can shelter and look at some of the exhibits. Lower down, there's another endemic pheasant called the Swinhose pheasant, um, which we may have seen already, but another stunning um, endemic bird. And here's the female again, not quite so stunning. Yeah, but a really beautiful bird and you get very good views. These are really used to people now, so you can get quite close and get really nice photos. Uh, sometimes you can have them uh, flapping their wings and you can even see some nice courtship displays. Uh, this one sort of does these kangaroo hops after the female. It's quite uh, entertaining to watch. Dashwe Shan is also our, uh, our backup if we've missed any birds already. Um, it's the best site for some birds, uh, like this uh, Rufus crowned Latin thrush. And also this one, the Taiwan thrush. This was recently split from the island thrush. When it was split, um, I think a lot of the guides gave a big sigh. It's a really tough bird to find uh, and we all do try our best to find all the endemics. It's, it's, uh, it's not easy now, but uh, we have a good chance here. Dashwe Shan is also fantastic for uh, night birding. This is one of the things we can go out and look for. The Himalayan owl, uh, another endemic subspecies, possible split. It's also great for mammals. Sometimes we see this animal at night, um, the Formosan serau, um, like a sort of mountain goat. Sometimes see this um, endemic subspecies of Reeves munchak, a small type of deer. Another animal we're going to be looking for is the red and white giant flying squirrel. Um, really spectacular mammal. Um, it's about, um, it's over three feet long from the tip of its nose to the tip of its tail, really big. From Da Shui Shan, we're gonna go down to the city of Dolio. Um, and from here, we're gonna visit um, an area called Huben, where we're gonna look for the fairy pitta. This is where we're gonna start our search at a little temple, uh, and often behind here, you can hear the pittas calling. Some of the other birds that we might find include uh, rufous-faced warbler, another endemic subspecies, this time the bronzed drongo, uh, endemic subspecies of collared finchbill, a type of bulbul. This is a really tough bird to find. We hear it quite a bit. Uh, it's called the black necklace scimitar babbler, uh, which we might also find skulking in some of the bushes. And then hopefully we're gonna find the fairy pitta they will have arrived just a few days before we come uh, and they should have started singing by now, but a really stunning bird. If you look at this video, you can really get an idea about this bird. Um, in the book, you just see this yellow and green and red and blue, but uh, 
when you see the bird in real life with this just shining blue on the wing um, it's absolutely breathtaking a really cool bird very distinctive call and one little bonus at the end of the trip and um, that we just found out about recently we went into a temple um, and they have quite a famous resident in there there's a little collared scops owl that roosts in the roof of this temple um, and the locals believe that it sort of protects the temple uh, a few years ago there was a big earthquake and many of the local buildings fell down but the the temple was left standing and people believe that this uh, scops owl had a, was sort of protecting the temple okay that is the end of the main tour um, there's one last place I want to show you which is on the east coast um, we don't currently have this on the tour itself but it's somewhere that you can add as an optional extension we're going to head to the city of Taitong on the southeastern corner of Taiwan you remember before I told you about this broad coastal band on the western side on the eastern side in some places the mountains just fall straight into the ocean um, and the other places have got a very sort of narrow coastal strip there's also a little coastal mountain range and there's a little valley in between this is an area where there's still quite a lot of um, Aboriginal people um, from various tribes. This is a little um, display showing um, where all the different tribes live. Really interesting people um, of uh, Polynesian origin, but uh, really fascinating culture, really nice music, which I'm very fond of. Okay, from Taitong, we're going to fly to the small island of Lanyu, which is sometimes called Orchid Island. A really fascinating place. We're going to land at Lanyu Airport and then we're going to explore the island. The local people here have got a very fascinating culture. Um, they catch a lot of fish in the sea um, and they have these beautiful boats with this very interesting shape. They catch flying fish um, and they do so by putting up a net um, across their own boat and then other boats will go around and sort of herd the fish and get them to try and jump over the boat and they'll try and jump over and hit the net and then fall down into the boat but a um, very unique uh, system of fishing it's got a very rugged coastline which is very uh, picturesque there's little uh, offshore islets that have got an interesting story during the second world war the US Air Force mistook this for a Japanese warship and uh, dropped bombs on these on these rocks but uh, luckily they're still standing and um, there's another famous rock here it looks like a sort of lion roaring this bird is quite common around the edge of the island the blue rock thrush but our main target on the island is the uh, Ryukyu scops owl but there's an endemic subspecies just to this island uh, which could be split in the future as the Lanyu scops owl that's quite common here um, and we should manage to find this at night Okay, that's the end of the virtual tour. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's a wonderful tour. I hope uh, you feel inspired to come one day. Um, it's not too physically challenging. Um, it's got very nice culture and really delicious food um, and a lot of different attractions. But you can see there's a lot of very beautiful birds here. Um, and I hope you join me uh, one day for a real tour here.